my name is Rachel Derbyshire, and I'm a recipient this year of the W. Garfield Wesley Foundation Fellowship for Northern Conservation. I'm here in the Kluwani region of the Yukon, where I'm currently conducting fieldwork on the Canada Lakes. My PhD focuses on the foraging behavior of Canada Lakes. Now, up here in northern ecosystems, the Canada Lakes relies heavily on its primary prey, the snowshoe hare. Now, the snowshoe hare naturally undergo population cycles that their populations increase starkly and then decrease over about eight to ten years. Now the lynx, uh, since the snowshoe hare is their primary prey, they also exhibit population cycles that mirror those of the snowshoe hare with about a one to two year uh, time limit. So this year in Kuwani, the snowshoe hares are beginning to decline. Over the last few years, their populations have been quite high, but this year those populations are starting to decrease as part of their population cycles. So what I'm doing is I'm up here uh, looking at how the Canada lynx might actually be changing their behavior uh, because of those changes in social care populations. Now in order to do this, I'm using some pretty nifty technology. First of all, I've got something called a, a GPS satellite collar. So this collar collects GPS data, a GPS location, about every 15 minutes. And every three hours it actually sends those locations up to a satellite and I can go online and actually almost in real time see where links are moving across the landscape. Now to customize these colors, we actually add a couple of other pieces of technology. The first is an accelerometer. So this accelerometer is a bit like a Fitbit that you might have on your wrist. It measures movement in three directions, so it measures activity patterns. And on a lynx, this might be able to tell us whether the lynx is resting or feeding or maybe even chasing different prey types. And on top of that, we also have this nifty little spy microphone. So inside this little metal housing, there's actually a small microphone in this battery. And these are both attached onto the lynx collar. And now this microphone will help us actually hear when lynx are exhibiting different activities, like perhaps making a kill. So together, the GPS and the accelerometer and the audio recorder are going to give us a really good idea of what lynx are doing as hair populations decline in this area. Hi there. Uh, welcome to a beautiful day in Kluwani. It's actually quite mild today. I think it's about minus 16. And we actually just got out of quite the cold spell where we had almost a week of sub minus 35 temperatures. So it definitely feels pretty warm today. Um, I'm just at one of my sets right now because I wanted to show you our set design for our live traps. So first of all, this is, this is one of our live traps here. It's a homemade box trap. Um, basically it's a big cage with a door and um, if a lynx walks into the back of the trap, it'll step on a pedal and that door will close. Uh, we put some nice bait in the back there um, to attract the lynx. And we also kind of cubby up the, the set a little bit. So we cover it with various branches and, and uh, leaves and things just to kind of make it blend in a little more in the environment and also to shelter the lynx a little bit as well. Hello again. Uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I'm actually doing a little bit of snow tracking today. Um, so the purpose of snow tracking is to go out and actually uh, basically follow lynx tracks and see what they've been doing while they've been out in different habitats. The other thing it tells us is whether any females might actually have kittens with them because this might heavily influence their behavior. So it's pretty nice because our current collars are satellite collars, as I described earlier. And these collars send the data up to satellites and we can actually then download those data, those locations onto our GPS. And then we can actually go to those locations and follow Lynx tracks, which is pretty neat. Good evening and thanks so much for coming along to my field site with me this week. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the, the daily work I get to do here in the Kuwani region of the Yukon. Earlier in the week, I talked a bit about those satellite collars and how I'll be able to figure out a little bit about individual hunting behavior of lynx, habitat use, and movement. Then I can actually use that information 
and put that into population models to understand population dynamics across the landscape. This is incredibly important in, in a conservation context for understanding things like sustainable harvest and when it comes to movement behavior, understanding important dispersal corridors for lynx as well. So I wanted to thank the, the W. Garfield Weston Foundation as well as Wildlife Conservation Society for supporting this really important research on Canada lynx. Without their support, I wouldn't have been able to purchase some of those satellite collars I showed you earlier or pay for the transmission fees for those collars. So thanks so much again for that incredible support and have a good night.